Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. Okay, there is so much stuff going on right now. All right, so where are we at? We are right smack in the middle of moving. Our last home is filled, like everything's, like all, all the cabinets are open and everything's come out and we're throwing stuff in boxes because the movers are coming in just a couple days to start moving our, all our furniture. So we are starting to bring stuff over kind of carload by carload um, and we're starting to put it in here, uh, just in the garage. A couple other places as well. We, we purchased um, new couches for the living room uh, and uh, these showed up early. <laughs> they showed up today and they weren't supposed to show up for a couple more days. So they are going in here. Uh, we actually can't put anything inside yet because the painter is still working on painting inside. Uh, he's going really, really fast. Everything else is just going really, really fast as well. Uh, so he's got everything masked up and I think he's even painted the master bedroom already. Ready, so I wanted to show you all an update of that. But, but in the meantime, <laughs> while we started putting stuff in the garage, I came over here and I noticed this. And it was kind of like, oh, okay, what is this? Fruit and nut harvest dates. And it is from Dave Wilson Nursery, which is pretty close to us. It's near M Modesto, California, which is just a couple hours south, like maybe two hours or something like that. Um, and then, so I was looking, let me see if I can get this on camera. I was looking at all the fruit trees they have here and I thought, oh, well, this is a pretty helpful list, you know? Um, and then the closer I looked, the more I started noticing, or I started noticing there are certain varieties that are circled. <laughs> so, I think these are my fruit trees that I have. I think these are the varieties of fruit trees, which is so, so very exciting. Okay, so let's see, here's the red. We have pomegranate right here. So if I follow red down, they have two, which is not right. Is this, oh no, I'm sorry, this is peach. Hmm. Okay, so there might be an Alberta peach and there might be an O. Henry peach. Here's an aprium. I don't even know what an aprium, I guess apricot mixed with plum, is that right? Flavor delight. Blueberry, I have not seen blueberry, but there's sharp blue blueberry. So yeah, so at least this gives me an idea of if I find a tree and I think, oh, maybe, you know, maybe it's this variety, maybe it's that variety. This will at least allow me to kind of um, narrow it down a little bit, which I thought was really, really exciting. So I just wanted to show you all that. Anyway, let's go inside. It smells like paint in here. So he's got everything masked up. He's, I mean, I'm assuming he's gonna spray is why he has everything all wrapped up and everything like that. Um, this, he hasn't started in here. Look at this, isn't that crazy? Isn't that neat? Fridge is all wrapped up, all that kind of stuff. All the windows are covered. This is so exciting. Yeah, there's his paint sprayer right there. And then he said that the master is done. Is that right? I don't wanna to touch anything. Yeah, it looks done. It looks done, how exciting. Oh, it looks good. And it's so, it smells so much better. I mean, it smells like paint now. <laughs> at this point, it smells like paint, but at least, at least it's clean, you know, and doesn't have any other smell to it. You know, when you move into a new house or you move into a new place and it's just, it, it just kind of smells different. This smells much better. <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah, this hasn't, oh, it looks like he started this. Oh, okay, so he's done the ceiling for this one. Anyway, I just wanted to update you all on this. I will come back, I'll stop this video and then I'll come back once he's totally done with the paint and has everything all taken down so I can show you all an update of this paint. Now, just as a reminder, this is Benjamin Moore White Dove. That is what I'm gonna do. Everything inside and everything outside. And I know it's kind of like, you know, absolutely everything's gonna be this white color, but that's really, really what I like. I like it like that. I think it's clean and this white isn't too stark, so it doesn't look 
um, it doesn't look cold, basically. I just think it's su it's just the best the best white color. And when I was talking about it, a couple of you responded in comments and said you felt the same way about this paint color. So if you're looking for a really good white paint, White Dove is the way to go for sure. Good morning, everyone. All right, it is a couple days later from the last time I came on. Um, let's see, the painter is basically done with the inside. He just has to do some trim. He painted the office, which I will show you all in a second. I am here bright and early this morning. It's gorgeous. I actually got to see the sunrise here and it was so beautiful. I'm here bright and early because yesterday evening, I got a phone call from my arborist saying he had a cancellation this morning at 7.30 and could he come out to remove the palm trees? And I said, absolutely, I will meet you there in the morning. So <laughs> I'm here waiting for them. Then I was up in the middle of the night last night. It was like all of a sudden my eyes popped open and I remembered, I haven't taken before photos yet. I told you all, I am so bad at taking before photos. I took a bunch of before photos on the inside of the house, but I haven't taken anything other than the videos that I've taken for the outside of the house. So I got up, I got up at like 5 a.m. and I ran over here so that as soon as the sun came up, I could start taking a whole bunch of before photos. So that's what I'm doing right now. Just trying to document everything before big changes happen, like removal of the palm tree. Um, and then I can have those photos to, to really compare from the very beginning. I mean, I already, I already took out the Budlia and I already took out those three rose bushes. So, but I, I have video of that. So I guess I could take stills from the video. I'm telling you, I am the worst at taking before photos. So I'm going to spend like 20 minutes right now and just walk around the whole property and take hundreds of pictures. <laughs> so I'll show you a couple right now. Okay, before pics are all done, I got hundreds and I even got some videos, panning shots, right? So that, you know, we could even have a better idea of what it looked like before we started any work. Um, Cause based on what Michael Glassman said, uh, he actually came yesterday. I think you all saw the video on Friday. Based on what Michael Glassman said and his ideas, this whole place is gonna change and it's gonna be amazing. And I'm so excited about it. So let me take you in to the office and show you all what it looks like completely painted. I think, I actually think this is just the primer. Um, so uh, I think he has one more coat that he has to do in here, but it still looks great. Okay. Here it is. It looks so much better. Oh my goodness. It's no longer a wood cave. Okay, let me come over here. Guys, see that? Oh, I just feel like it opens it up so much. And again, the windows are all covered right now, so it still seems a little bit dark, but it looks 10,000 times better in here. I'm so glad that I decided to paint it. You know, I was going back and forth and I couldn't decide um, because I do like the wood look. I think it is pretty, oh, but it just looks so much better like this. So very, very excited. I think I'm gonna put my seed starting shelves right there and my seed starting shelves are actually white. So they're gonna blend in perfectly. I think they're gonna look really, really good right there. I'm gonna set up a little like chair area um, so that when, you know, when I do videos where I um, talk about things, you know, talk about seeds that I've bought or, um, I don't know, things I've learned in Master Gardeners. I'm, I want to set up an area for that's the place that I can sit and I can talk. Uh, so that's kind of what I want to do right there, especially if it's raining. Wouldn't that be nice just to have a spot to come in and film something? And then I was thinking about putting my desk right there so I can look out, um, you know, uh, my computer. I, I'm... I do all my editing for YouTube on my laptop right now, and it's just it's just not good for me. It's not good for my neck. I'm always kind of bending down and looking over. Uh, so Jason bought me a really big uh, monitor screen that we can just hook in. So, you know, the monitor screen is, I think it's going to kind of take, you know, kind of go up to here, but I don't care. It's better for me, and it's better for ergonomics. And so now we actually have room for that as opposed to when I was in the closet, <laughs> we really didn't have room uh, for a big monitor like that. And I needed a little laptop. So I cannot even tell you all, I am so very excited about this. They're here. So exciting. Oh, I can't wait. 
goodbye palm trees. Sorry for those of you palm lovers. <laughs> it's just, it just doesn't work here. Okay, so they are getting all set up. They said that this should be a pretty easy job because there's lots of space to um, fell the tree. Is that how you say? And they thought that they were gonna have to like hook it up with ropes on a roof and all that kind of stuff. So it's much easier because there's a lot of room. So that should be a piece of cake. So when they said that, <laughs> I said, oh, well, do you by any chance have time to remove the rosebush stumps? And they said, yes. And then I said, Oh, then do you have any by any chance have time to remove the budlia stump and they said yes and then i was feeling really bold right and thought well do you guys have any time to remove these rose bushes here let me turn the camera around these guys <laughs> these rose bushes because the propane tank is getting moved the propane tank is getting moved right there over there on that side that's where the people came yesterday and that's where they said is the best place for it and Michael said just anywhere over on that side so that's gonna be moved there so the propane tanks gonna be moved and then if they have time if everything goes well I might get these out today oh my goodness oh my goodness I everything's going so fast and I am so excited so I already told them I'm gonna be the weirdo. I got permission to film and everything just like I did last time. So this is the same company that came and removed my birch tree at my old property. I'll link that video below. They're so professional. They're called, if you're in this area, they're called American Arbor. And the owner, his name is Matthew and he is an ISA certified arborist. And um, he was telling me, and then I also learned in my master gardeners class that you only want to hire tree people that are ISA certified arborists. So basically you can hire someone to prune your trees or take care of your trees and they can actually do a lot of damage. And that's what happened in our old house. We had, or we didn't have, when we moved in, our birch trees had been pruned and they had been pruned improperly. And what happened is water had gotten into the trunk and had had basically killed the birch tree. So we ended up having to remove this bir beautiful birch tree. And when these guys removed it, it was like gushing, gushing liquid out of the middle of the trunk. So, you, you know, you could just tell that it was pruned improperly. So it is so important to hire someone who knows what they're doing. And the best way to gauge it is if they are ISA certified. I don't know what that stands for. I will put it right here. But anyways, these guys are ISA certified. I'll put a link to their contact information in the description below as well. <laughs>
All right, everyone, it's actually a couple hours later. Um, man, the, the tree guys, they were here from 7.30 till 1 30 in the afternoon i mean they worked their butts off today and i am so thankful for them so once they left um i actually ran home and i had to pack up some things and then we took a load over here and we actually have the bunnies over here so you know it's happening if we have the bunnies here already they're living here they're actually going to live inside um not the bun bunny bungalow yet they're going to live inside the house the bunny bungalow is getting finished painted tomorrow the interior of the house is done painting now so we can start moving things in um, so everything is happening very quickly and it's very exciting uh, so I'm just you I'm just so happy with what happened today the tree the, these people okay so they're called they're the business is American arborists and they're out of like Davis Woodland area and I'm only saying that because I know there's some of you that are from right around here I just feel like I want to like shout their names and say they're good <laughs> you know um, because it's just always such a relief when you hire somebody and they come out and they like exceed expectations and that is what happened today they really exceeded expectations um, while the guys were cutting down the trees and cutting down oh my goodness I, I feel like the rose bushes these ladybanks roses I feel like that was the hardest job today that was the one that took them the longest time um and even even getting out these roasts these stumps right here they were having a hard time with that that was a difficult thing I could tell uh, the palm trees were easy it seemed like so um while they were working on that the arborist his name is Matthew he actually walked around the entire property with me and um, identified all the trees even identified the neighbor's trees so I kind of knew what I was dealing with across the fence uh talked you know tell me told me what he thought about them how I should take care of them what to expect from them like kind of their lifespan Ban or something like that um, and then he even gave me recommendations on new plants that he would plant that I should plant like shade trees or privacy trees uh, it was it was invaluable information it was priceless information so I'm gonna walk you guys through and hopefully I can remember everything he said I wrote some of it down in my phone um, but it was oh my goodness it was just so helpful so we got all the palm trees out we got all the rose bushes out we got the bed out it was it was a great day. Let me turn the camera around and I'll, I'll give you guys a little tour. Look at this. It looks so different. It looks empty. It looks empty. So um, I think I said earlier this morning, the propane tank, we've already talked to the gas people, propane people, um, that is getting moved right up there by the front gate right there. So that's, we'll have to like cover it or, you know, I don't know. We'll just we'll just pretend like it's not there <laughs> but you can see look at how different it looks oh my goodness it looks so different um so we've got all the lady banks roses right there removed there uh, there are still two stumps that we're gonna have to remove but they didn't have time like i said they were here forever so they didn't have time to remove all of it and i felt bad you know <laughs> i didn't want to keep asking them for things so i'll probably have them come back out to remove this massive massive the nest right there like these we're gonna take out and then remove that they took away all my budlia bushes or branches that i had cut off which was so sweet because i did not know what i was going to do with them that's actually something that that I, di I didn't think about is that as I'm taking out all this extra material, what actually to do with it? Like, do I do a burn pile? Do I get a chipper? You know, I only have one little green waste garbage bin right there. And this is a big property. So here you can see the Budley was removed. They did a great job with that. Um, you know, they actually offered to remove this for me. And I said, yeah, great. <laughs> but it's just, you know, again, it's time. So they said that they said they could remove this for me. So, I mean, might as well, right? Because that's, that's kind of like the plan. So that, that will be really exciting. I don't know when they're going to have time for that, but there's no rush on that. Okay, let me actually, let me start up here so I can kind of tell you all a little bit about the trees that he talked about. Okay, so we were talking about the line of trees, evergreen uh, hedging trees, privacy trees that Michael Glassman recommended, and he gave me a bunch of recommendations for those. Um, one of the main ones that the arborist recommends, and actually when we were in our old property, he recommended this tree to me as well. It must be one of his favorite trees. It's a xylosma. 
Xylosma, I'll put a picture of it right there. He was just going off about how great that tree is and how, um, you know, easy it is to care for. And, you know, it's just basically like a good tree that you don't have to worry about. Uh, so I might put those there. He, he's going to send me a list of a bunch of options. Um, but he was giving that, that was his primary recommendation was the Xylosma right there. And then coming around here, he showed me these two plum trees, the two dark ones, he told me are ornamental, <laughs> are not actually producing. Well, they will produce, but they just won't produce that much, which is so frustrating. And then he did actually tell me these two plum trees are not long in this world, not long for this world. <laughs> That's what he said. He was like, you can, you can expect them to start declining probably this year, which is interesting because I don't want to design a landscape around dying trees basically so I will have to I'll have to think about it I'll have to talk to Jason about it but that was really really good information he said this one was fine this this middle um this is an is not an ornamental plum it is um it's it, he didn't know the variety but it's a good plum but these two are ornamentals and they are not the best option so that was good to know he said, my citrus trees are fantastic. He said, they're really great. They've been well cared for. Um, maybe, you know, he's like, they need water and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So we have to take care of them. Uh, I do have someone coming out who is going to help me with my fruit trees. That will probably be next month, but I'll have to come around. Um, I'll actually turn on the sprinklers tonight for a really long time for them. So I think that'll be good. He loves my fig tree, which I love as well. And then he did say that the pomegranate looked fine. So I didn't have to worry about that. Now I wanted to show you, I just noticed this today. My nectarine slash plum, plum tree, I couldn't identify what this was, right? I had a couple pe people telling me it was a nectarine. I had a couple people telling me it was a peach tree. Here's the problem. <laughs> Here's why we were all confused. How many trunks do you see? <laughs> One, two, three, four. There are four different trees here with different varieties. So I think right here is a peach, right? Cause fuzzy, fuzzy means peach, right? And then right here is a nectarine right there. Cause smooth. I actually had one of these today and they were fantastic. So good. Um, and then here, another peach. And then coming around here, this one isn't, isn't even fruiting yet. If you look here, there's nothing fruiting on this one. So there are actually four different varieties of stone fruits, which is so interesting. He told me I had to um, take all these stakes out because those weren't doing it well. A anyway, he, he was he was interested with this. He was like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> he didn't say that they were bad or they were dying. He actually said they look good, but um, he said he had never seen something like this before, which is okay. Now I have something that an arborist has never seen before. <laughs> so apple trees there. And then coming along here, coming along here, he said there are uh, almond trees. You can see here. Almond, almond, beautiful with the goats in the background, if y'all can hear that. So he said the almond trees here, and those are on the other side of the property. And then I think he, I think he said this was a walnut. Oh man, I cannot remember what he called these. I can't remember. I think I want to say walnut. Um, anyway, he said that all these trees right here, they are not going to be long lived is what he said. He said not to expect them to be there for a long time. And his purpose for telling me this is that if I wanted privacy right here between the goats, <laughs> that I needed to plant privacy trees along this fence right here. So that was really interesting. Um, you know, he said they didn't have to be tall because there are power lines up here. He said they, you know, they shouldn't be as tall as these trees are right here, but they should be you know, eight feet, nine feet or something like that, just for some privacy, because these trees won't be here 
I don't know, 10 years from now or something like that. So I found that really interesting. Then over here, I have one, two, three olive trees. He said they were black olive trees and he was so happy about these trees. He said they were beautiful, they were well taken care of, and they're going to be so easy and bulletproof to take care of, which is really, really exciting. Um, so he did say that he could come around. I asked him if he could come and help me prune the olive trees because I don't know how to do it because you can see all this all this stuff right here and he said yeah we can do that it's not necessary for the health of the tree um but it would make it look better so I, d I asked him if we could do that and he said that this is happening the tree's getting a little stressed because of these guys see that ground squirrels ground squirrels so ground squirrels are something that i am absolutely dealing with here um and i was looking at ground squirrels and it's really common for them to be under like big piles of brush or, or shrubs or something like that and if there's nothing like that in the garden which there's nothing here they will burrow underneath fences and stuff like that so i'm reading about how to kind of manage those and deal with them it involves trapping and stuff like that so that is something i'll need to take care of here, this one right here, this is on my neighbor's property. This is a hackberry. He says this one is not long for the world either, which is kind of sad, really not, not fun. But he does say that these hackberries, they're prone to getting, <clears throat> excuse me, aphids. And the aphids will excrete honeydew, right? And he said it's the aphids are not bad for this one, but you can see <laughs> gross but all this stuff right here that is honeydew from the aphids that are normally in hackberry trees so it was just nice of him you know I, I don't I don't need to do any of that he said if it gets bad we can, it's an easy treatment it's not a, not a big deal at all but again it's on the neighbor's property so only if it gets bad enough that there's a lot of honeydew secretion coming down um which is like the sticky sugary stuff if you all ever walk underneath a tree and your feet kind of stick to the ground that's honeydew from the aphids it's basically aphid poop basically and it's a really really easy fix to take care of so if you all have that problem call an arborist because it's it's a piece of cake to cake, take care of so that's another one that he recommended planting something in front of because that is not long for the world either um he loves my chinese pistache he said this is such a good tree and i said yes i love it so much i love it he says he doesn't even need to do anything to it he doesn't need to cut out any dead or it it just looks perfect which is so exciting to hear so this is another one of the olives that's doing really well and then back here um is it a spruce gosh did he say spruce I'm so bad at tree names, you guys. I think he called this a spruce um, or a cypress. Oh my goodness, I don't remember. I'll put it on the screen right now. Anyway, so this is on our property, this one right here. I was really excited because uh, Christmas decorations, right? I'm gonna be able to come back here and cut some of these branches off for Christmas decorations, which is so fun. Um, but this one is in dire need of some water. So this is another one that I'm gonna have to come back and I'm gonna have to give a deep, deep soak for. And then <laughs> it just keeps going on and on. I got a chip drop. While they were chi chipping up everything, I thought, oh man, you know what? That stuff would be really, really great in between like my veggie garden beds that I'm gonna do. And so I asked them to drop it and they were so sweet. They dropped it back here. So, I mean, just, I feel like I scored today. All right, it's kind of dark. Let me quickly take you all through because the painting is done and it is so exciting. It just feels fresh in here. I know you probably can't tell because it's white over what was white already, <laughs> but it really does make such a big difference to have a freshly painted house. I'm so excited about it. So looks like he still has to clean up this area, but man, it is looking good. So good. Let me see if he's cleaned up the master. All right, it is cleaned up. Oh, it's so exciting. Oh, it looks so good. So this is the master bedroom. I'm gonna come back here. Now, our master in our old home was small. And this one is even smaller than that. I hope we can, 
I don't even, I think we're gonna have to get new bedside tables to be able to fit everything in. And you know what? That's okay. I feel so lucky to be able to have gotten this house anyway. And it's like, like I don't, I, I don't wanna call us beggars, right? Because we're not, but beggars can't be choosers. You know what I mean? This, this house is a dream for us to have. So I don't even care if the master is a little bit small or anything like that because man, I am just so happy to be here. So everything is looking so fantastic. We are getting places and I just, I just couldn't be happier. Okay, so the other thing they did, which was so sweet, I had this pile that I had scooped up with my Birkenstock gloves the other day. They actually took away that pile and I warned them. I told them how thorny it was and they said, not a problem and they got rid of it. So again, I'm, you know, if, if those of you who live in the country have any suggestions on what to do, I'm a little nervous about burning my debris. I just, oh man, I just don't know if I feel comfortable with that. So maybe I'll invest in a chipper or something like that just because I know I'm going to have a lot more yard waste. There are, there is a compost area in the back, which I'm planning to do a lot of the, um, you know, like not woody stuff basically uh but but like the big woody stuff i have to figure out what to do with so huge steep extremely steep learning curve for us out here but it's been oh, it's been so fun i mean we haven't even been here a week and i feel like you know <laughs> i'm like living a completely different life so anyway hopefully this video wasn't too long for you all i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today